नमस्कार वेलकम टू डैलस मिरर ऑन देसी प्लाजा टी वी इन कोलेब्रेशन विथ रेडियो करिश्मा आम योर होस्ट करिश्मा हिम्मत सिंघानी इन डैलस मिरर वी हैव अ वेरी डिस्टिंग्विश गेस्ट विथ अस इन आर स्टूडियो एंड हिज नेम इज पद्मश्री डॉक्टर संत सिंह विरमानी डॉक्टर विरमानी इज ए इंटरनेशनली रेकग्नाइज लीडर ऑफ हाइब्रिड राइस टेक्नोलॉजी डेवलपमेंट एंड डिसमिनेशन इन ट्रॉपिकल कंट्रीज आउटसाइड चाइना Currently the technology developed by him in collaboration with several countries is being used by rice farmers in an area of 5 million hectares producing about 6 million tons of extra paddy worth 1.5 billion dollars every year about 80 private seed companies around the world are currently involved in developing and disseminating this technology and having business worth 120 million dollars every year currently dr virmani is residing in plano dr virmani has been involved in community service in north texas through frisco rotary club and a voluntary organization m core that is multicultural outreach round table in plano mayor's office it's our great pleasure and an honor to have him here with us and talk little bit about his work and his personal life here in Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex Dr Virmani welcome to the studio of Desi Plaza TV Thank how you. are you doing today Thank you I'm doing fine Um Dr Virmani I would for my um viewers I would like to know more about you that where did you where actually you come from originally from India and uh, where did you study and uh, tell us more about your background to our viewers Well Krishna I started actually my career or uh, originally I should go back I was born in what is now in Pakistan in northwest frontier province mm-hmm. and migrated to India in 1947 mm-hmm. and I had started by schooling in Jaipur Rajasthan mm-hmm. then for middle school i was in delhi then from high school onward up to a masters in agriculture i was in madhya pradesh mm-hmm. and after that uh, i moved to punjab mm-hmm. and got my phd from punjab agriculture university mm-hmm. so you can say that i have been going around yes <laughs> from the time i was born uh-huh. and because of different circumstances Mm-hmm. uh to different parts of the country mm-hmm. and uh, after my phd mm-hmm. i moved to international rice research institute mm-hmm. in the philippines mm-hmm. where i started my career professional career and then since then i have been outside india mm-hmm. until now and i have uh, worked in the philippines I worked in the uh, International Institute of Tropical Agriculture in Africa mm-hmm. in West Africa I was in Liberia for 6 years mm-hmm. and then came back to Philippines again mm-hmm. in 1979 mm-hmm. and I retired from that institute in 2006 when I came to Plano to wow. set, settle up <laughs> so you can say that mm-hmm. uh, uh, रहने को घर नहीं है सारा जहां जहां हमारा हमारा बैकग्राउंड यस सो यू आर ट्रूली ग्लोबल पर्सनालिटी बेसिकली लिविंग इन प्लेनो टेक्सास हाउ प्रिवलेज वी आर वेल डॉक्टर बिरवानी आई वुड लाइक टू नो मोर अबाउट योर वर्क गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ऑनर्ड यू विद पद्मश्री एंड प्रवासी भारतीय अवार्ड and डेफिनेटली इट वॉज ए रिकग्नेशन फॉर योर एस्टीम वर्क दैट यू डिड एंड दैट हेल्प कंट्री ग्रो especially the time of green revolution well your research area you were research scientist would you like to tell our viewers um were you already interested in research becoming a scientist or was it the destiny well it was again a coincidence when after my middle school in delhi i went to madhya pradesh mm-hmm. and uh, my father and mother they were living in a a uh, small town mm-hmm. and they were, my father was involved in uh, <coughs> uh forest 
business, like logging business, mm -hmm. forest contractor in Madhya Pradesh. Mm -hmm. So I started schooling there and it so happened after two months of my, it was a school which was uh, converted from a high middle school to high school, mm -hmm. the year I joined there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started studying the normal subjects. Mm -hmm. But it was just by a coincidence after two months I was uh, studying all those uh, art subjects. Mm -hmm. Order comes from the government of Madhya Pradesh mm -hmm. that this school is a rural school, so this will become an agriculture high school. Okay. So we started studying agriculture. agriculture. <laughs> That's how I got introduced uh -huh. to agriculture. Mm -hmm. My parents said, okay, uh, since he was working in the forest business, mm -hmm. so in people with agriculture background can become rangers and the district forest development officers, divisional forest development officers. This is as far officer. they could think. Yes. So th 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 okay, beta, this is a good line. Mm -hmm. uh, you can become. DFO mm -hmm. one day. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started mm -hmm. in agriculture. So after high school, mm -hmm. then I went to agriculture college. Mm -hmm. And then my exposure to agriculture continued. And uh, in BSc agriculture, I was introduced with the subject known as uh, genetics. And I liked that subject very mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. And I became interested in, in with, for my master's. I did my master's in agriculture botany with ag genetics and plant breeding as mm -hmm. a uh, background. Mm -hmm. So after that, uh, I went to Ludhiana, mm -hmm. Punjab Agriculture University, mm -hmm. and worked there for two years, mm -hmm. and then got admission in PhD. And uh, I was given, uh, I was awarded University Grants uh, Commission Fellowship mm -hmm. in India and I got, I resigned from my job and I co completed my PhD with that fellowship. Mm -hmm. And after that, I, my professor in the year 1967 mm -hmm. moved to uh, International Rice Research Institute in the Philippines okay. as Assistant Director General. Mm -hmm. And at that time, a lot of people were moving from India to USA, from outside India mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm. for the studies or for their careers. Mm -hmm. So when I, my professor came on home leave to Ludhiana mm -hmm. in 1967, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 68, I asked him also that can I go out of India mm -hmm. and uh, it so happened that uh, since uh, I was a good student mm -hmm. and had done a good work with, mm -hmm. with him. So about uh, eight months before completion of my PhD, I go to the department mm -hmm. and uh, my then professor asked me, Dr. Mani, do you want to go abroad? Mm -hmm. I was surprised. I said, mm -hmm. I have not applied anywhere. Mm -hmm. So he said, come, come after some time to my office. I will ask you and tell you the in some, some information good for mm -hmm. you. So I go to his office and he says, you have an invitation to go and work in the International Rice Research Institute under the leadership of Dr. Atwal, who was our professor. Wow, okay. So that's how I got... Dr. Atwal was directly involved in Green Revolution as well. Later. Yes, okay. he, he was a, a, a origin, originally was a, a wheat breeder in mm -hmm. Punjab mm -hmm. Agriculture University and head of the department of mm -hmm. plant breeding. And he was instrumental in bringing the high yielding wheat varieties, mm -hmm. uh, introducing them to Punjab. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was successful in mm -hmm. uh, revolution, uh, the Green Revolution in in, in, in Punjab. India, yeah. In Punjab. In Punjab. In so, uh, you 
started working with him in that Rice Institute in, in Philippines. Yes. And at that time, already the Green Revolution had taken place. Okay. The yield of rice had increased from about two tons to two and a half, three tons level to about eight tons, mm -hmm. nine tons. So th the scientific question came just out of curiosity whether this yield level is the maximum rice can give or we can go higher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one idea that was uh, explored at that time by Dr. Wall and myself as, as a uh, mm -hmm. uh, associate mm -hmm. to look at hybrid rice, mm -hmm. which is means that you develop strains of rice by making first generation cross of two parents mm -hmm. and that across uh, is showing hybrid vigor. Mm -hmm. So, exploiting the phenomena of hybrid vigor mm -hmm. was the basis for developing hybrid rice technology. So, in the initial stages, nobody believed that it, it was uh, going to happen mm -hmm. or it was possible, but we as an exploratory mm -hmm. subject, we took that challenge. Uh -huh and did some initial work mm -hmm. and uh, it so happened then in 1970, it was 1981, mm -hmm. we had an international rice conference mm -hmm. in International Rice Research Institute where mm -hmm. I was working and this subject was discussed during the international conference. Mm -hmm. But the scientists from all over the world, mm -hmm. including the Nobel uh, Peace Prize uh, scientist, Dr. Uh, Borlaug, mm -hmm. he was also there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, concluded that perhaps this, the te this technology was good to explore, but this was at the right time to do that ah, okay. because the, the question was we had increased the yield from two three tons level to eight tons. eight tons and the question was it is more important to stabilize the yield at eight tons level mm -hmm. rather than increasing it further okay. at that time. So this was the subject was shelved. Oh, okay. Where, which on which you were working? And on, on okay. which I was working. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, that was uh, in 1970, 70, 71, sorry. Okay, it yeah, 71. okay. And at 72, I left uh, in month of June. And uh, then <coughs> after I left, I had a chance to, to go to the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture in uh, West Africa. Okay and I spent there from 73 to 79, okay. six years and during that period uh, in 1977 mm -hmm. some Chinese scientists came to International Rice Research Institute mm -hmm. and they announced that they have successfully developed hybrid rice. Okay. In China. Okay. And it surprised everybody, including the international scientists working at the yes. International Rice Research Institute. Mm -hmm. So it took them some time to confirm, but Chinese had done it, uh -huh. and they had commercialized that technology. And after it was confirmed, then they decided mm -hmm. to uh, explore the possibility of that technology outside China. And again, it so happened, it was a coincidence that I was coming to USA for sabbatical leave for mm -hmm. one year in 1979-80. Dr. Purmani, I would like, I, I'm so sorry that I'm interrupting you, but it's a time to take a short break. And when we come back, okay. we will talk about your uh, you know that what happened next because this okay. is very interesting. Okay. We'll take a short break and come back. <laughs> 